Welcome everyone. Welcome to this astrology report on the full moon in Aquarius, August 1st. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit about it in the intro here. We'll go over just some general themes and whatnot, challenges, opportunities that this brings, what it means for us. And as we get deeper into this video, I'll talk about some transits, some you know current energies with the retrogrades, and even some aspects. And for those of you who are really interested, I'll put some more um, U.S. natal uh, chart information on how the United States political astrology, mundane astrology, how uh, that's being affected by this full moon in Aquarius, which is very much about the collective, okay, when we're talking about Aquarius. But yes, if you stick to the very end, uh, I will also kind of have a little bit of a sneak peek into the next new moon on the 16th with that new moon in Leo. Oh, one last thing. I'm in the middle of editing and I realized I forgot to tell you guys. I am running a three-day sale. And the last time I ran a sale like this was probably a year ago. So if you want to make sure that you catch those discounts while they're available, because I do not know it could be another year from now before it comes available again. And I am running ads on Etsy. So uh, I don't know, you know, I could get pretty booked up and I'm letting my YouTube audience know about it first. So if you want to be first in line and you want to grab those limited time offers while they last, which will be the day before this moon and the day after and the day of, okay, then make sure you come over to my Etsy and you get signed up for um, a private reading. And that is going to help me meet some financial goals. And hopefully I will be helping you meet some of your goals as well. Hope to see you at Etsy. Links are down below. Okay, so about this full moon in Aquarius. I'm Team Aquarius, for those of you who don't know. Aquarius Sun, Mercury, Medheaven. <laughs> so, you know, I had to get in the spirit. I had to get my amethyst. I had to get my amethyst working for this video, right? And let me say, um, with it being a full moon and being having all these Aquarius placements, um, yeah, Leo, happy birthday to you guys. This is maybe affecting you too, because, right, you're the opposite of Aquarius, so... Um, I, I, I mean, it's, it's going to be different for everybody, but you know, definitely we're talking about some ending or completion or culmination and, and how that hits you will be different depending on, you know, your natal chart. Um, but let me say some are calling this a sturgeon moon. Others have called it a corn moon or a harvest moon. And it marks a period in the calendar where the days are going to start growing shorter from this point forward in preparation for fall. So energetically, it's a time where we just start winding down and putting less work into what would be preparing for winter, right? That transition from summer to winter, you just start slowly gearing, gearing down. And I know that many of us are not farmers anymore, but it's the same energy, particularly if you bring in the aspect of the retrogrades forcing us to kind of wind it down a bit, which I'll talk about in just a moment. But I think that it bodes well for uh, aligning your intentions with a sense of power because Pluto is not far from this um, moon and also having a sense of resilience in doing this um, with that that sturgeon moon and so um there is a need to adapt and persevere through challenges and that's basically the spiritual meaning of this full moon is endurance determination perseverance in order to reap a harvest to have a more abundant life or really what i'm getting as i'm sitting with this more intuitively now uh, I'm getting a sense that it's more of this energy of preparing for winter, okay? And side note, unique to this year and this coming into this winter, December time, we are going to be so like, you know, neck high with the retrograde. So it is absolutely a time to really assess. I'm getting into totally dropping some burdens, dropping some heavy weight so that you can really focus more strategically on what is going to prepare you to get through those winter months of us coming into it with so much retrograde energy. There will be opportunities that this lunar energy gives us, which is finalizing maybe some long held hopes or wishes. I don't know. I have been thinking back, you know, to earlier this year when we had that new moon. And so you might have uh, hoped or wished for something around February of last year. And now you're coming full circle as I'm, I'm personally witnessing that in my own life. I was a little bit nostalgic at that time. 
and there weren't any retrogrades going on and I was like why am I nostalgic about this place I hated this place when I was there I like was trying to get out and now it looks like I will be taking a trip to visit that location again and so you know it's something maybe along those lines um, that you had maybe hoped or wished for in some respect um, or, or maybe you had outstanding issues uh, long-held issues that you're finally getting closure on and this might bring an awareness of the need to release some relationships with Aquarius. You know, it might have to do with an Aquarian. It might have to do with a collective, um, friend groups, social media, um, you know, going in and purging out people that you, you've been following that you really don't align with anymore so that you can align with new friends, new connections, new communities, new groups, and also really coming into that alignment after having reassessed or figured out how do you get your individual needs met in a group dynamic. Now, there will be some challenges around this time having to do with maybe seeing and accepting the truth about the past and how you create that meaningful change in your life with your actions, with your efforts. I think another difficulty of this time is that if there are cracks in the foundation of certain relationships or groups or communities, um, it's going to be shown and you're going to also probably become more aware of emotional disconnect with others. There is a lot of energy with self-concern with the sun in Leo during this time and even in the, you know, the moon in Aquarius. Aquarius, yes, on one hand is about the collective and humanity and all of that, but at the same time, we're very much individualists and we like our personal freedom and breaking the status quo and rebelling against it, you know, so um, both of these energies, although, the, you know, they're, they're in contrast to one another to some degree, that's what they have in common, so it, it might be that this self-focus or self-concern for whatever the reason um, is damaging relationships and you might come to an awareness of this. And so, yeah, that could bring up, you know, conflicts having to do with ego versus altruism, what's good for me versus what's good for the group or group think. Um, just a lot of individualism I see showing up here. And there could be some pain and anger about not getting emotional needs met. So some key themes during this time, I think will be, um, obviously relationships, communities, groups, as I mentioned earlier, where these dynamics are getting tested and also dyna dynamics of the present versus the future, because I think Leo is more in the now, um, where Aquarius is more in the future. And then of course, there's this contrast of the heart versus the head, um, where yeah, Leo is very heart-based and um, Leo tends, um, Aquarius tends to be in their head, right, a lot. Um, what both have in common is they're both fixed energy. So there could be this kind of stuck energy of what do I do? Do I do I do what's good in the moment or do I do what's good over the long term? Um, do I follow my, my heart or do I follow my head? And some people, again, that might be where there's a disconnect that's happening or a difficulty um, or uh, damage being done to relationships because people have a hard time picking a side of the fence perhaps or not clear or not seeing things clearly or just having trouble accepting the truth of a matter of where they need to be going um, individually at this time so that everybody can get a win-win situation. So as I said earlier, think back to earlier this year, I was thinking more like February timeframe, but actually more accurately, we're looking at January 21st of 2023. When we had this new moon in Aquarius, what intentions did you set during that time? What did you aspire to? What were your ambitions last winter? Like when you started the beginning of this year, what were you hoping for? What did you envision for the way this year would unfold and how did it actually turn out? What did you accomplish? And this is about you taking a step back and looking at the ideals versus reality and where maybe you felt short if you did okay um if, if you fell short in some respect or reality didn't live up to that the hopes or wishes very um aquarian by the way um how do you get back on track how do you try again how do you start over with a better understanding and knowing of what went wrong or what doesn't work and why
Okay, so let's talk about some transits that are going on, and yes, definitely including all the retrogrades that are becoming increasingly important as we get deeper into this year, and they just keep racking up. Um, we're coming into this time with this full moon in Aquarius with five energies continuing to be retrograde. So there's a lot of internalized change, a lot of restructuring of our lives, and having to face some reality checks against wishful thinking. A lot of people might become a little bit more withdrawn or just reflective where they're considering, reconsidering what they value and what honestly nurtures them while revisiting some old wounds having to do with asserting oneself as worthy of living a self-directed, self-determined life with the North Node now being in Aries. So these five energies I'm talking about are Pluto retrograde in Capricorn, which started June 11th, and we've got like three months of this left. We won't come out of it until October 10th. And this is a lot of internal, deep internal change. Uh, maybe with issues having to do with, you know, authority as a structure of our lives. We've also got Saturn retrograde in Pisces. That's where the sober reality checks, the shattered illusions are coming in. Um, and that started last month, uh, June 17th. Uh, four more months of that. We won't come out of it until November 4th. Then we have Neptune retrograde in Pisces as well, which is just adding adding to the shakedown of, of lies, deception, illusion, which, you know, we are awakening to increasingly within the collective. A lot of things coming out, a lot of sober truths coming out. And that started June 30th, won't end until December 6th. So we're looking at another five months of that. Um, Venus retrograde in Leo started July 22nd. We won't come out of it until September 3rd. We are looking at a, roughly 40 days of that where we're reevaluating um, what nurtures and nourishes us, mind, body, spirit. Yes, it could be a time of reminiscing about the good days gone by, thinking about an ex, uh, maybe trying to reconcile with an ex or a loved one. Um, just be careful that probably until September 15th, it would not be a good time to solidify any commitments in a relationship because as long as Venus is retrograde and in that shadow, uh, you need to like really reassess what you value and what's adding value to you. And you probably won't be totally clear on that until September 15th, roughly. Um, and then of course we've got Chiron retrograde in Aries, which started July 23rd and will not end until December 26th, so five months of this. <laughs> and with Chiron, we're talking about self-worth wounds in Aries and, and, and then the North Node is in Aries at this time. So everybody collectively is like, okay, you need to be moving in a very self-directed path. You need to be stepping in your own authority. You need to be, you know, Aries is the warrior. You, you need to get up and stand up for yourself, okay? But, oh, wait a minute. There's some self-worth wound like you don't think you deserve to live life on your terms you don't think that you're entitled to make choices for yourself i mean fill in the blank we're all having to like confront this over the next five months so you know let me say that it's confirmation of the the energy of this moon which is saying it's time to drop what is not a priority you know um and focus on preparing because we are coming out of a time that maybe would have been better suited for getting new beginning starts. But at this point, if you're trying to get some new beginning or start, it, it's going to start feeling like sludge trying to move it forward. So yeah, like for me personally, um, I'm hoping to move again. I've already put out, you know, applications. I'm on waiting lists. I haven't heard back. And if I don't hear back uh, by probably mid-September-ish, um, me personally, and especially knowing my own natal chart, I'm going to be like, okay, I guess this move is not happening because, I, it, you know, we're, we're, not lo we're looking at probabilities, all right? Everybody's got free will, but the probability energetically that I would be able to move this forward in the way that I want uh, is going to become very difficult. And I'm psychologically preparing myself for that because I'm sitting there like, you know, that that meme with the, the person with the stick, like, come on, do something. <laughs> 
and 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 it hasn't happened and i'm like okay the clock is ticking um and you too might be in a situation where you're like where is it where is it uh by the way i talked about that with the last new moon uh, there is an urge to urgency like come on let's get it moving where is it let's go and yet in the back of my head i'm like oh my god what if this doesn't move holy shit, what if this doesn't, what am I going to do? This is part of the preparation and the resilience and the perseverance that I think that the sturgeon moon is imparting like, okay, do you need to drop something so that you can get more traction, more movement? Or do you need to start looking at plans B and C because if it didn't hit by now, maybe it's not going to hit this year. Sorry, that's a sober, stark truth, which is Aquarius energy, okay? So let's talk about the aspects associated with this full moon in Aquarius. Not a lot, actually. It's not, it's not real complicated. Okay. So also I want to say that we have Mercury retrograde in Virgo coming up, adding to this. Um, and that's going to be August 23rd into September 15th. We will then also, around roughly the same time, have Uranus retrograde in Taurus, August 28th through January 27th. And then Jupiter retrograde in Taurus, September 4th, December 30th. Now, that's a little bit ahead, right? It's, it's not quite relevant at the time of this full moon, but it's just more reason, I say, that it's going to get harder to get change and expansion as we get further into the year, particularly with Jupiter retrograde in Taurus. That's you trying to expand on something that you value. But with it retrograde, it's like contracting. You're going to have to reassess how bad do you want this. And again, with Uranus retrograde, it's if you're trying to get stuff to uh, from, you know, I, this is August, September onward, um, quite difficult. And with Mercury retrograde Virgo during that time frame, you're probably going to be forced to rethink, like, okay, maybe even picking it apart, dissecting it, like, okay, why, why is this not expanding? Why can't I get change here? Why won't this thing move? Um, and I would say that definitely as long as Mercury is retrograde in Virgo from late August to mid-September, you probably don't want to commit to contracts that is not advised, okay, generally speaking. Obviously, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Yeah, overall, it's this feeling of being in limbo, if I may say so, and I don't like saying that, but that's the sober Aquarian truth of the matter. Um, prepare to put some roots down one way or another, right? This is not about the exciting stuff that maybe I was talking about earlier this year. I think I, warned, I was warning y'all all, all the way back in, April, May-ish, that you needed to be putting out applications. Like if you wanted to get something, you needed to just be machine gunning it. And I know this is hard, by the way, because like I probably, I don't even want to tell you, I'm going to say into the thousands, I put out applications, inquiries, um, and whatnot for different things over a thousand. And I got some feedback, but it just really didn't go anywhere. It fell flat. And so if you're in a similar situation where you're like, well, I, I I did. I tried when the energy was supporting it, but why is it still not moving? Um, understand you're not alone in that. And sometimes you just got to let it go and say, I did my best. And now I got to figure out some different way. I'm just putting that out there for whoever needs it. So yeah, that holding pattern can be very frustrating, particularly as it continues to tighten up during this year. And with Venus retrograde in Leo from July 22nd through September 3rd, as I mentioned before, a lot of us are going to be re-examining, reconsidering relationships. And the last time that it was in this position, by the way, was 18 years ago. So there might be something relevant to you about an 18-year cycle. That was 2005. For those of you who need me to do the math for you, um, it, and it possibly had to do with you know important changes in relationships. For example, I know back then I was um, you know my my youngest daughter was born, and now she's 18, and I'm an empty nester. So this is a time to maybe reflect on things like that that have uh, come to completion in an 18-year cycle. Um, but again, it's about reflecting, reconsidering, not necessarily taking action, as tempting as that might be, as frustrating as it might be that others aren't taking action in the way that you hoped or wished. As I said before, this energy could bring in uh, the return of an ex or longing uh, for lost love or what's missing from your life. Some of you deeply nostalgic, trying to recapture something um, that you become painfully aware of is, is missing from your life, something that maybe you had from your past. 
um, maybe more attention, more love, more loyalty. Um, because again, we're talking about Leo. So feel whatever that is that, sh that is amiss in your life. And, and that is going to help you during this kind of lull in the energy to heal. Right. Sometimes what we what we are longing for reveals what we really value. Um, but I do think that with this energy in Leo, we have to be careful about being overly self-concerned to the point of narcissism. And I think most of my audience is not going to do that. But of course, you got to be aware of other people who are have this very what about me? What about me? And some of you, you might be in that situation, but you're not really doing it for uh, dark shadow reasons. You're just legitimately concerned because you're single, you're dealing with this loneliness epidemic, that everybody's single, right? I'm going to be talking about that soon. I am working on releasing, actually, matter of fact, today, <laughs> working on filming um, the War on Families um, video special that I'm going to be putting out on this, okay? A lot of us, we, we have families, definitively, but philosophically, theoretically, many of us don't have the support system of a traditional family and we are very much alone so you know or are you just feeling alone feeling unsupported and that leo energy is really going to take have us taking a long hard look at what about me where do i fit into this you know who's who's actually loyal to me who's giving me the attention who's giving me the love and um, some people, they might cope with this through overindulgence, excess waste, overestimation, overconfidence, um, negative attention-seeking behavior. So I'm just going to encourage everybody to be mindful of that within themselves and, and others um, and try to find some healthy forms of validation. And if you can't in your relationship or relationships, Aquarius, <laughs> um, chew on that, okay? really chew on it with the retrograde energy and hopefully by mid-September you're going to come out sharper in terms of what you want to add value to that is in alignment and returning value to you. Now with Jupiter and Taurus squaring the moon in Aquarius and the sun in Leo during this time um, it's just adding more energy of well we've got a challenge here in terms of getting expansion on what I value. Jupiter is in Taurus. Um, it's trying, I should say, with Mars and Virgo. So um, we are getting some support in terms of taking some practical action towards getting this expansion that's being challenged. But with Saturn retrograde in Pisces and opposing Mercury and Virgo during this time, this practical action is coming out of having reassessed the wishful thinking really looking at the limitations, the reality checks that we have had on that. And with Pluto and Capricorn, that's not far from this moon, squaring the North Node in Aries and the South Node in Libra, which is all about self versus others. Well, there's another challenge here in the mix, which is heightened emotions about, well, what decision should I make? And people being, and I've even caught myself doing it quite recently, like, I don't know, should I go do that or should I go do this because of power dynamics? Like, I don't know, is that going to empower me or is this person going to feel like that's going to disempower them? Well, how can I, you know, how can we make this a win-win dynamic? Um, but I do get a lot of, um, gosh, I even felt it rise up in myself last night, you know, when I was doing this deliberation in my head about this way or that way, you know, well, maybe I should just be open-ended and see where this goes and, you know, um, don't have any expectations. Um, but at the same time, like, no, you, you probably shouldn't go do that. You need to prepare for what could go wrong. And I think there is, when we're talking about Pluto, we're talking about maybe even some suspicion about people's motives and concern about some undesired outcomes like I don't know if I go do that am I going to wind up screwed over because they don't want the same thing they don't value the same thing their intention is not the same as my intention you know we're going after two different things and this is a misalignment and, and, and ultimately somebody's going to end up disempowered or maybe even feeling exploited this is kind of deep right but we're talking about Pluto it's, it, there's an emotional intensity that gets brought up with this energy. The only advice I can give you about, you know, 
these energies and making decisions and not knowing which side of the fence to stand on. Like, I don't know, I'm getting like this, what's safe, you know? I think you're going to have to leverage the, the psychic energy that this full moon and even really the lunar energy of this month of August is going to offer all of us because we've got another full moon at the end of this month in Pisces. So you're going to have to let spirit be your guide. And I know that sounds contradictory because I just sat here and told y'all, well, you're going to have to be practical. Well, how do we reconcile that irony there? You're going to have to be spirit led about what practical action you need to take. And that's probably, you know, not going to be as clean cut as I, you know, as anyone wants to hear, but that's the best I can offer. All right, let's talk about the United States and how this full moon is impacting U.S. politics and the world at large. Um, for brevity's sake, because I am working on this other special uh, on the war on families, I will not be heavily editing this, okay, which I, I enjoy doing and I think y'all enjoy doing, but I'll probably putting more of that into my war on families special. And I will be talking more about these issues um, let me also say thank you for those of you who, you know, gave me likes the last time uh, when I, I asked, you know, should I be putting more of this content out there? Should I do another, you know, six month uh, astrology report for the United States? Um, because some of you are into political astrology or mundane astrology, as some call it. And so, you know, I'm into it as well. And so if they, the demand is there, I'll put it out. And um, I did see a lot of likes and, and just continue if you want more of that. Um, continue to show the likes and I think that probably if I continue to get you know a good response and feedback then after I finish this war on family special I will work on doing a six month uh, astrology forecast for the United States but again want to see that like to do it okay so at the time of this full moon in Aquarius it is hitting the United States uh, natal chart in the second house is where this, the moon is showing up, okay? And it's opposing Leo in the eighth cell health. So we're talking about money and values getting triggered. Specifically, you know, we're looking at income, revenue for Americans. So I think that right now for a lot of Americans, obviously um, personal income issues are very unclear. A lot of doubts, a lot of confusion. And with the Sun and Leo in the eighth house, there is a spotlight on shared resources, taxes, secrets involving the ruling class elite globalists and their shadow side, their shadow agendas, the shadow government, right? The deep state as it's called. Um, and people are having to see the truth about this and where money is going. You know, I mean, go on Twitter and you're gonna see all these stuff coming all this you know whistleblowers and what's going on with the doj and merrick garland and i don't even get all into it but my god the scandals the kickbacks the bribery the corruption with the family that cannot be touched right and people are becoming more and more aware of it and i think that's what even is even more shocking than than, than a spotlight being put on these secrets is that there is no justice nothing is being done about it and so while this is all occurring, we have Saturn transiting um, Pisces in the United States natal chart uh, of the, thir the third house, okay? And it is conjunct Ceres there in Pisces in the third house. So we are seeing that there is a squeeze being put on taking care of local resources, more specifically, homelessness. I mean, you drive around any major city and it is just undeniable, the, the homelessness epidemic, the fentanyl crisis. Mind you, just a couple years ago, they told you lies. The same people told you, you lies that some of you are still believing to this day. They told you inflation was transitory. Then, then they told you inflation is good for the economy. And now you're not supposed to believe your lying eyes. But hey, it's out in broad daylight what's going on. And then, you know, they're telling you, let's send more money to Ukraine, but arguably our major inner cities are looking like war zones, but nobody wants to talk about it. Even I recently saw um, Pence, Mike Pence, a Republican, the, the VP for, for Trump, 
uh, said that the United States is not his concern. And it's just, I'm telling you, it's just out there. How do you not hear this? How do you not see this? Uh, the scales have been lifted. Now, of course, some people can't make sense out of like, they're not connecting the dots. They don't understand what the hell's going on because they're still in denial or they're still drinking the Kool-Aid. I don't know. But uh, this conjunction is opposing Virgo in the ninth house with Pallas there, which is strongly indicative that the pressure we are feeling on a local level is being added to, I mean, it's already there, okay? But then you add this, this conjunction opposing Virgo in the ninth house in, with Pallas, it's like, okay, the authorities are adding um, further pressure to do what? To facilitate more productivity workers from abroad, right? Ninth house is long distance. Virgo is representing the working class, blue collar people. Why are they doing this? They want more productivity, but more importantly, they want cheap labor, okay? And by the way, this is further suppressing wages. So um, what's happening here is we have an, an illegal invasion that is being orchestrated. It has been orchestrated to squeeze resources out of American communities and weaken them. You have diehard Democrat locales like New York City. I just saw a press release from the mayor. They're saying they have no more space. And these people are, you know, have been for how long bragging about being a sanctuary city, bring them on over. Now they're saying they can't do it anymore. And this is after how many months of exposés showing that the city is using taxpayer dollars to house these people in hotel rooms. Oh yeah, they've had American Americans have their reservations canceled. Maybe they reserved the hotel space for a wedding reception canceled because the hotel decided instead to get revenue from the government subsidizing housing for these illegals. Shocking stuff. And now the mayor comes out and says, oh, we are tapped out. No, I'm like, hey, no, oh, no, no, it was good for you. I'm sure you got an extra bed in your mansion. Why don't you open your doors up since you expected every other American to do that? So the fact of the matter is, and this is the ugly truth that nobody wants to speak about. They're gonna call you a, a racist, a xenophobe or whatever. But the ugly truth is that this has been allowed and Americans who protest against it have been gaslit because the ugly, nasty truth, sun in the eighth house in Leo, is that the ruling class wants cheap labor, taxpayer subsidized slave labor, essentially. Now, mind you, we still have Pluto conjunct um, the United States natal Pluto in the second house. It's a Pluto return, right? In the United States natal chart, which is bringing an intense change to values and in and our resources. It's creating intense disruption, chaos, death, rebirth, like, oh, you really value that. You really value open borders. Why don't you try that on for size and see how it works? I mean, it sounds good on paper, you know, in theory, but in all practicality, Virgo in the ninth house, how does that pan out? I mean, you can't just open your doors up to anybody. Now, can you? I mean, this is, by the way, common sense. Here we go back to Virgo. Common sense. If you yourself lock your doors at night and, and your windows and you don't just let anybody into your house, why should that happen for a country? Um, that was super naive, super naive. And we're learning the hard way that, you know, you can't just give yourself away to everyone at any time over anything. You know, you have to have some healthy boundaries. And I think that also Americans are becoming more aware of the Bidens selling off America to China and Ukraine and the Department of Justice becoming compromised by the Bidens. Because we have seen that, you know, documentation, evidence, whistleblower saying they knew about these scandals with the laptop, with the bribery as, as early as, uh, as recent as um, summer of 2020. They knew as early as this election and they actively hid it from the American public. And all this is coming out and people are realizing, wait a minute, we are paying taxes and these people are betraying us. With the Sun conjunct natal north node, 
the United States Natal North Node in Leo in the eighth house, this is putting a spotlight on these matters and people are looking at, okay, what is our rightful path forward with this nation and how far have we strayed from it? We have very much gotten off course. In Leo, you know, this energy is very fiery, very passionate, but it's also very fixed. And I see this coming out in a way of uh, more and more Americans are increasingly leaving the left. They are understanding, just like many Republicans have come to know that we have rhinos, we have Republicans in name only. There are closet Democrats, closet progressives, closet socialists, communists. Many Democrats are abandoning the left, particularly after Pride Month, and realizing this is not the party that I thought it was or that it used to be. It's been infiltrated by socialists, communists, progressives, okay? So I think also we are having a lot more Americans they are seeing through the PSYOPs post-2020 with the you-know-what. Honestly, on a positive, optimistic level, I see that we are moving towards a revival. I am actually very hopeful. Like, it's ugly, but sometimes it has to get worse before it gets better. People have to know the truth. You could not, everything that people have come to know as true today as I speak, you could not get them to, to chew on that or to, to process or digest that uh, back in 2020. So we have come a long way, but what it took to get us here is a lot of sober reality checks. But I am encouraged that this has brought a major wake up call and a revival. I mean, look at what's going on right now with um, that song that just got banned on CMT, Country Music Television, uh, from Jason Aldean. If you haven't heard it, I might put the link down below. And I'm not really crazy about country music. It's probably my least favorite genre. Uh, but my God, I've been playing the heck out of that lately. And it's called Try That in a Small Town. And they banned the video. They banned the song on country music television. Why? Listen, this has the earmarks of ESG, Black Rock, Larry Fink written all over it. And I think we learned about what those words mean back during Pride Month. If you don't know, go watch my last two specials on the war on men and the war on women, okay? Um, but yeah, they banned it. And, and as a result, it has just, that it has been trending on Twitter. It's now number one on iTunes. People are talking about it everywhere. And basically, if you listen to the song, he's talking about pro second amendment and he's talking about people looking out for one another in their communities. And this is what the globalists are trying to shut down. They want everybody to be like Dylan Mulvaney, trans. But you start talking about defending your rights and helping your neighbors defend and protect their rights. Oh, we got a problem with that now. But the Americans are speaking and you can see the truth when you go look, hey, number one on iTunes. By the way, there was another like pro-liberty song that was out a while back from Loza Alexander. The name of the song escapes me right now, but man, when that song came out, that was so funny. And it's rap, but my God, that one hit number one on iTunes as well. And so I'm gonna tell you, there are more of us than what you are seeing on um, legacy media, mainstream media. And they know it, they know it. And the ratios don't lie. When you see the, the, the this, these, songs are trending on Twitter. When you see that these songs are hitting number one on iTunes, the people are speaking. We are not about this nonsense. And more of us are joining the ranks, particularly after Pride Month. I think a lot of Democrats got some wake up calls and realized, holy shit, I ain't about this. I'm not about this pedo grooming crap. And I'm not about, you know, castrating and mutilating children. If this is what the Democrat party has become, they want out and good. Thank you. We've been waiting on you, okay? Going back to the energy, let me say, um, I feel like Americans only monetary power at this point, given what I mentioned earlier about BlackRock, ESG, and, you know, bribery and corruption and injustice and all of this stuff. And many of us and our, our loved ones homeless out on the streets or strung out on fentanyl because they can't cope when deal with reality and holy crap, the mental health crisis, don't even get me started on that. Um, our only monetary power at this point with these money houses getting triggered with a full moon is voting with our dollars. And you know, what's left 
of those dollars after seeing them go to Ukraine and illegal invaders who are coming after our jobs and our welfare programs that we have paid into for generations. Um, all we can do is vote with our dollars and we are seeing results. We see, you know, the stock has been crashed with Bud Light, Target and more. Um, I could go on, but that's where our power is and that's how we step into it, North Node in Aries, right? Now, moving on, um, we do have some significant oppositions going on in that third versus ninth house. Those ninth houses, that axis of, you know, local community versus, you know, abroad um, or long distance rather. Um, but it's also about information, facts versus beliefs. Um, so I really see this is third versus ninth house oppositions is where we're seeing a lot of information wars going on. People reassessing, well, exactly what does it mean? Diversity and inclusivity. I mean, these are buzzwords that make a lot of people feel good when they say it. But I mean, what about our um, cultural identity? Okay, um, what about us preserving our cultural identity as Americans? And um, this has much to do with what I said earlier about local resources being tapped with Saturn retrograde. Many locals are getting reality checks on this, but they're still unable to see through the lies. Might be because they're strung out on fentanyl or mental health problems, I don't know. But especially when you start looking at, um, with the energy, this might imply uh, local news, even being propaganda. Yes, probably so, because most of, most um, news outlets are, are owned by, goes all the way back to Black Rock, State Street, Vanguard, okay? So uh, we're having to connect the dots on some of us on our own having to do with borders and especially as we saw what happened over in France, which I haven't seen much of it lately because their government shut down their social media. It's been a blackout. But last I checked, uh, they were in basically a civil war, a migrant crisis, and that's what Ninth House is going to bring up and imply. And with Venus retrograde and Leo in that Ninth House, we Americans are looking at our values through a much bigger, grander lens, like looking abroad, Ninth House. Look at what's going on over there. That didn't end well. There's something they don't want us to see, or else why did the government shut down their social media? And prior to it being shut down, what we did see is that France's beautiful cultural heritage was being destroyed, which I argue is cultural genocide, right? They had libraries, they had medieval era churches, being burned and even current modern state of the art, a, a library being burned that contained historical documents. Uh, we were witnessing a cultural genocide. Is that what we want happening over here? And so again, going back to that song that was you know, so controversial, uh, try that in a small town. They don't want us looking out for each other. And they certainly don't want us picking up our guns and defending ourselves. They want us looking to the government for protection, provision, and they need us divided in order to do that. So with the United States natal moon in Pallas and Aquarius in the third house during this time, opposing Venus, Black Moon Lilith, and Leo in the ninth house, this is bringing up some very strong beliefs, probably about women. This is a lot of feminine energy showing up here with the moon, with Venus, with Black Moon Lilith. And in Leo, it's getting super inflamed where people are coming against group think, political correctness, um, you know, that's been communicated. And people are starting to push back on the be nice rhetoric when it comes to castrating and mutilating children and pushing back on being called violent, like, you know, this guy, Jason Aldean, uh, called violent for pushing for self-defense against violence breaking out in our cities and in our towns, which, by the way, like it or not, that's what this country was founded on. You know, the sober truth of it, Aquarius, <laughs> we're in a bunch of 1776 energy right now, which is people, you know, pulling out their guns and telling the ruling class elite, Leo in the eighth house, the hell you gonna, right? I mean, that is where the saying live free or die came out of. And again, you can agree or disagree, but this is America. This is our cultural heritage. And we're just tired of being gaslit over defending it and holding us to diversify and be inclusive of people who are conveniently engaging in cultural gen genocide. They're not being inclusive. They're not embracing our, you know, <laughs> our diversity as people who are pro self-defense, the right to self-defense. 
With Aries and Chiron in the fourth house, and this being Chiron return for the United States, opposing Juno and Saturn and Libra in the tenth house, uh, the, the the pain of this, like, oh, should I be ashamed that you know this this country was fought and won by rebels who had guns against the bourgeoisie, the ruling class elite? Should I be ashamed of this? Um, <laughs> in the homeland, fourth house, <laughs> should I have self worth issues about this? Am I a bad, violent person? No, come on, you're gaslighting me. Um, the pain of all of this, this pressure from you know. The government, 10th house, uh, and maybe its allies in, in over, I don't know, NATO, uh, UN, World Economic Forum, because <laughs> I'm talking about like allies in Libra um, and Saturn, a lot of authoritarianism, okay, in diplomatic relations um, and alliances, okay. Um, these people want to us to be ashamed of ourselves, um, but the pain of this is actually just pushing us to return to our roots in the fourth house and return to getting back to the basics of what we as a nation aspire to be out in the world, 10th house, which is not a country whose people get looted for, you know, cheap labor and funding bankers wars. You know, um, we, the people were against this. We were willing to die for it. That's how against it we were. Honestly, I feel that the cultural genocide is is aimed at, at this mentality that actually many of us have ingrained in our DNA. Like if you believe in epigenetics, okay, um, those of us like myself who have uh, ancestors who were here at around the time of the Revolutionary War, 1776, a matter of fact, I'm the descendant of uh, a young Irish man who fought in the Revolutionary War. Prior to that was an indentured servant, okay came here on a boat at 13 years old, was probably kidnapped because that's how a lot of them got over here. Um, but the point is, um, you know, if you believe in epigenetics, this, um, this science that, that says ancestral memories are stored in the DNA of us, well, you know, we're fighters through and through in our blood. And that's who the globalists are trying to get rid of through the, that happened in 2020, and now the illegal invasion. Um, where you're looking at uh, people talking about replacement theory, which I think is very real, where it, there is a white genocide going on, or people of European descent trying to get those people out of not just America, but we're seeing it in the UK, we're seeing it in Europe, um, European countries, uh, which is a long drawn out conversation, but I could say specifically for here, uh, they probably want to get, you know, rid of us that engaging on all these anti-white campaigns calling us racist xenophobic whatever um because they know we're the ones most likely to fight back we have it in our dna we have it in our bloodline we fought back before and and worse for them we won and so we have we have the audacity to do it again and to believe that we will actually be successful and if history is any indicator we will be oh yes we will <laughs> do you hear it in me do you hear my great great grandfather talking we're gonna do it <laughs> and, and and frankly it's it's not just a cockiness right which is leo right it's not just a pride right it's listen we are doing it we're doing it with the boycotts we're doing it with the voting in our dollars and and you see you see these things gaining traction the ratios the the trending the um the sales and and you see it's helping us get traction, gain momentum, and regain our confidence. Chiron in Aries. Yes, we're doing it. So Jupiter and Taurus is in the uh, fifth house of the United States natal chart. It is squaring this moon in the second, which is opposing the sun in the eighth. So we're trying to get expansion with our own population, our own money markets, our own happiness. And again, I'm going to go back to that replacement theory that I talked about earlier of you know, we know that population growth is in decline for people of European descent, especially post 2020 and what happened, okay? Also with the money markets. So, you know, we're trying to, I think, get more expansion. People wanna get out there and um, get on with their lives. But values and economics are challenging this. We've also got Mars and Virgo in the ninth house trying this. So that is pushing us to get expansion through analyzing the situation that we're in. 
and taking practical action, as I mentioned earlier. I mean, I think what this is going to look like on a very um, mundane level is that we are probably, this is probably going to involve removal of these migrants. And I know this is going to sound ugly, but I mean, it's like, look, let, let's just Having them remain here is not sustainable, okay? And some of you may have heard Trump and some of his uh, rallies say that if he gets reelected in 2024, that there will be um, mass deportations, the largest deportation that there's ever been in the world. The, the gaslighters who would say that's racism, no, that's economics, okay? This is not sustainable, which is, again, a buzzword of the left and the progressives and socialists and communists. Okay, you want to talk about sustainable, this is not sustainable. You can you can have these pie-in-the-sky dreams all day, but when you have the mayor of New York City, who has in past bragged about being a sanctuary city and given taxpayer dollars to housing these people in hotels, now saying we don't have any room, guess what? The dream is over. It's time to wake up and realize that maybe what we've created here is a nightmare because this utopia is not what you imagined it to be. It's actually not a utopia. With Saturn retrograde and Pisces opposing Mercury and Virgo, um, that is definitely a reinforcement. It's just another layer there. So frankly, I, I don't know why when I was like sharing that with you, I, I kind of, I got a download like, I know that a lot of these illegals are starting to come out and protest and say, where are our jobs? And, and I'm just like, what? why did you think that there would be jobs here for you? Who told you that? Who? And I'm telling you, I'm willing to bet there were propaganda campaigns going on in South America and wherever these people are coming from, telling them, come on over, the door's wide open. Now, I know, you know, some of them get through and then they text their family back home and say, hey, it was so easy, man. I got a, a, a plane ride and, a, you know, I'm getting free hotels over here. Come on, bring more, you know, like we know that's going on. But how it got to this level, I would not be surprised if there were some kind of propaganda campaigns going on, some kind of messaging going on in these other countries from the people who are trying, the globalists that are trying to wreck this nation to put the, plant the seed in their brain to begin with to do this. But I would like to know, you know, I wish some people would interview um, these illegals who were like, I need jobs, I need healthcare, I need this and that. Whoa, 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 hold on a second, you're over here illegal. So who told you that you can come over here and get all this free stuff? Who told you this? We have to put a stop to this. And unfortunately, I, I kind of got a vision as I was uh, thinking about this. We know that there are millions, millions, millions of these people here, but you're not yet seeing the impact because a lot of them are being housed. They're being subsidized with housing, food. They are, particularly in the cities, they're the ones that are taking, swallowing up most of the resources at these food pantries. It's predominantly these people. Food pantries, supplying free food that should be going to Americans are going to these illegals. But see, it's all what's going on behind. You don't even see it. But the moment this gets cut off, the moment they're no longer being given the free hotels or the free welfare support, you're going to see these people out on the streets. You think the homelessness situation is bad? Ooh, sweet Jesus, I'm gonna download for myself. It's bringing me back to people wanting to stay out of these major cities, okay? That's, that's all I'm gonna say about it, all right? I do wanna share with you that recently I listened to a man who had a near-death experience and I am fond of, I've been listening to near-death experiences since I was like 11 or 12 years old, I think I read my first one and I've always been intrigued by them. So this guy was sharing, he said that, you know, right now we're in a time of chaos and he explained that it's necessary as ugly and intense as it is, it is necessary to awaken Americans out of their stupor and to start taking back authority and control, right? It's like, I just I, I just heard, you know, these, these government officials yet yesterday and it was trending on Twitter, they were talking about how Americans have no absolute right to free speech. I'm like, and this is in response to censorship, and I'm like, hold, hold up, wait a second, who skipped? history lessons here. Because let me tell you something. I know from the US Constitution, the government doesn't give rights to Americans. Americans' rights are God-given. 
That's according to the Declaration of Independence. That was established in 1776. You don't give rights. Therefore, you can't take them away. You have no authority. That is the beauty of this country and the way it was founded. The government does not have the right to give or take away rights. You have no authority. Your only job as government is to defend those rights because those rights are God-given. And you see, we have people in political office, supposed public servants who are acting like we're supposed to be serving them when it's the other way around. They got a bass backwards, okay? And now either they don't know the history or they think you're stupid and you don't know the history and that they can just boss you around and tell you what your rights are. Hold up, wait a second, go back and read. Let's get back to square one. And that's where we're at. And I'm telling you, I'm just saying, we've got to have a revival here where people understand their rights. And we do not have public servants coming in with the cockiness, the audacity to tell us that our God-given rights are something that they are in charge of, that they have authority over, and that we need to defer to them like we're the servants. It's just ass backwards. We have got to restore this. We've got to revive it and set it straight. So, um, Yes, back to the near-death experience that I mentioned, this guy said that, you know, out of this chaos that was purposed for a good reason to awaken Americans, we have the opportunity to set things straight. We have an opportunity to return to the values that historically made this country a leader, a beacon of light to other nations and made this country historically a place of opportunity for all kinds of people. And by restoring our nation, um, I think that we could also set the stage for other nations to restore theirs. And that's the kind of cultural inclusivity and diversity that I would like to embrace. All right, let's wrap it up with um, a sneak peek into what is ahead. Um, as I said before, August is going to be a very spiritual month um, with two full moons and the sign of one in Aquarius and one in Pisces at the end of the month. So we start off with that full moon in Aquarius in the month with the full moon in Pisces, super spiritual, both signs, super intuitive, empathic. So, you know, again, if something seems stuck like Chuck or you don't know where this is going, you know, lean on that spiritual energy and all those downloads. Mid month, we will be having a new moon in Leo on the 16th, which will be squaring Uranus and, um, uh, Neptune and Pisces will be opposing Mercury and Mars in Virgo at that time. Um, we're going to have Pluto retrograde in Capricorn as well still during that time, but it will be trining Mars in Virgo and Jupiter in Taurus. So what this means is that, um, again, it's just more of what I said earlier, that getting change is going to become increasingly challenged. So, you know, try uh, to set goals uh, that are practical, grounded, obviously, um, at about this time. Um, you know, ever after having done a good release with this full moon at the beginning of the month, um, letting go of maybe some pie in the sky thinking, you know what I'm saying? Around the first, maybe by mid month with this new moon, you then get to a place where you're ready to set some goals that maybe aren't overly, overly ambitious, but um, are more designed to kind of boost your confidence. Um, while you are being practical with your efforts and plans and you're very grounded in your approach, um, doing what needs to be done, okay? And for the remainder of the month, I mean, hopefully I'll put out another video around that time for the new moon, we'll see. Um, but I will say, you know, as we come to the close of the month, uh, the sun in Virgo on the 23rd, along with Mercury retrograde in Virgo, super reflective, super um, analytical, um, assisting with the practicality that I was talking about us needing, okay? Uh, like, if you don't know what to put your foot down on, hopefully it'll get clear the second half of this month. Um, and then Mars and Libra on the 27th, probably taking some action in terms of relationships and who you're partnering with. And then on the 28th, you're in a stretch of great in Taurus that we're coming into where it's just like, here we go with... I don't know about change, but you definitely gonna be thinking about it for the remainder of this year. And then on the 30th, we close the month out with that full moon in Pisces, opposing the sun in Virgo with Saturn conjunct the moon. I am seeing more of these uh, limitations being put on lack of clarity, uh, wishful thinking. I honestly feel like it's going to get a lot more sober 
and leaning on spirit is probably going to be looking more like walking by faith and not by sight but not in a hopey wishy type of thinking not not this smoking hopium type of <laughs> okay i wish i could say better but anyway i hope that helps and until next time please know i'm wishing you all the best be blessed